Welcome to Inside Out Boys with your host, Cody Bass. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the channel. Big hello to all you new subscribers. Thanks for stopping in and joining us. Gonna have a lot of good outboard fun up in hell. Full show. Um... I'm going to do a fax check on the 25 horsepower Johnson. Um, before we do that, though, I am going to... Uh, I've had a couple requests on uh, taking apart these older lower units off of like the 9 and 1 half. And the smaller ones um, that had the old style lowers and so forth. And since I had recently in a video, a couple videos ago, uh, tore the water pump housing out of uh, a couple of those, I'm going to go ahead and pop them open real quick and we'll look and see what's inside there and you can see how it all goes and so forth. So let's get to it. If you've got one of these older, like six horse, seven current five or whatnot and I think this one over here is a nine and one half the old turtle pumpkin motor um, but I don't really know I know this one's a six it's probably around a 60 63 something like that but if you've got one of these and it's been running salt water for any time at all you're gonna need these devices these impact screwdrivers, impact drivers, or whatever. And if you have a work table, something like this, put it on there like that, and then you take your, what I do is I scoop right up against it, take my knees, so it's on there good, and you want a good bit like that, a nice squared off bit that fits it well. Because if not, you're just going to strip it and these things are spring-loaded, back, turn. And you want to keep the turning pressure counterclockwise, and they'll come out. They'll be tight, but they'll... But again, make sure your screwdriver fits. Um, and it's a real good bit. And they, I've seen them... Um, in fact, I might have a... Yes. This one has Phillips screws in it. Hopefully you can see that. So, you you know, I needed a Phillips. And again, make sure it fits good. Same process. They come in Phillips and straight. So, this is the setup. You might want to have a rag. If you've got the water pump off and stuff, oil's going to come out if there's any in there. These were already drained. And then you'll probably need a bit like that with this same tool and everything. Um, if they've got age and salt water use to get the drain and fill screws out as well. So that's the process for that. For... Now this motor here has at one time or another of late been in the, uh, in the possession of a commercial fisherman. Um, uh, yeah, definitely, definitely been in the, the possession of a commercial fisherman at some point. Um, uh, how do I know that, you say? Um, well, you just have to say that I have a hunch. I, I have a hunch. I have a, you know, just a... a a hunch. Um, let me get the cotter key out. Uh, it's just I just have a hunch that at some point it's been in in the hands of a commercial fisherman. Okay, let me throw this <clears throat> cotter key away and I'll be right back. All right. I think, but I'm not sure if this. I think it's a nine and one half. Or is it a nine print five? OMC. All 
right. Now, I've already drained most of the oil or what I could get out of this when I got the nine and one half draining. So you're gonna bring it over there like that. Let me make sure you're even in there. Are you in there? Are you? Yeah, you're in there pretty good. All right. Get over here and put it where it's braced right there and little taps. Like I said, these are saltwater motors, so this one has been at some point resealed, so um, so it may have new parts in it or newer. Okay. okay. Here's that. I'm just taking a gander before I take that cradle screw out. Well, there's a good gander. So, stay there. Bye, Joe. So we can see the pinion gear and whatnot. Yeah, it looks good. There's the pinion gear and the drive shaft. Now this is a six horsepower and that's what the inside top of it looks, ah, looks like. And there's your bushing for the drive shaft and here's your pinion gear. Looks to be in really good shape. Okay. And that pinion gear looks to be held on there with a little C clip or a clip of some kind. Where's my little? I thought I brought a littler screwdriver. Let me get a pick. I don't know. Don't know. There's nothing holding that on there except for the little keyway. You can see the pinion gear, and there's a slot for this little key. It's in the drive shaft. There's our little key. It's just a regular, normal woodruff key. See it there? Okay. And there is a C-clip there. I thought there was. I don't know if you can see it, but... I guess it positions the uh, the pinion gear to a certain level. Let me see, is that what it does? Boy, that pinion gear sure is tight on there. So you see it hits up against that C-clip and that holds the pinion gear where it's supposed to be. You know, it won't let it go any higher this way.
So there's that. And I think I'm just going to leave that little C-clip on there, but you can see it right there. You can see it moving around and around. So that's the uh, drive shaft portion. And I'm going to put the woodruff key back in and tap it back up on there, or attempt to. So that I keep everything together. And like I said, at some point, darn it, at some point this thing's been taken apart. You can see the, the orange RTV on there and that's not factory whoops doofus I might have to do that there we go so there it is all back together and the c-clip stops it at the top and that'll keep it at the right height there's your drive shaft for the six horse now what do we got here besides an early mess all right, there's the innards of it. Um, as you move the shift rod, you can see the clutch dog going forward, reverse, forward, reverse. So it hits on the inside of these driven gears. These gears here, which look to be in really good shape as well, um, they are what that pinion gear spins like them so. So anytime you pull over the motor, those gears are spinning. Okay, and then when you shift it back and forth, the clutch dog inside here goes to the inside of those big gears there and catches lugs on the inside. So, that's the whole setup on a uh, 1960 to 62 ish, and even, even later, and probably earlier, clutch dog and gear setup. And I think the 9.5 will be virtually identical, just bigger. And this screw here, the Phillips screw, don't ever take that out if you're just changing the oil or something in your lower unit. This holds the cradle yoke at the bottom so that it slides back and forth. It, it comes around up under here, and uh, we'll look at that. I move my gears. If you're wondering what that noise in the background is, it's bald eagles. So there's the Phillips screw, and you can see, hopefully you can see, it goes through the yoke and cradle setup that slides that clutch dog back and forth. Forward, reverse, forward, reverse, forward, reverse. So that's how that goes. And like I said, if you look at the orange RTV there and around the O-ring there, you can see this thing's been replaced. Or no, I can't say that. It's been taken apart at least. And everything does appear There's the forward gear inside the lugs look great There's a little nick on one of them, but nothing Nothing substantial anyway So There it is Beep 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 
And let's put that back then. Oops, the cradle fell out. Be quiet, Mr. Bold-Headed Eagle. See that cradle just, the yoke just sits on the cradle, I guess is how you would say it. Then you have to come up under to catch the whole thing. Boy, that's harder than it looks, but we can do it. We can do it. I think it'd be easier to have this on here though. Get in there, get in there. It just fits on the clutch dog. Get on there. Right there in the middle. You get the you get the idea. Right there like that. Then you gotta get it on the cradle and all with this thing turned a particular way. <laughs> there we go. Come on now, you can do it, you can do it. There it is. All right. There you go. So that's what's inside a six horse. Six HP O M C, and I will keep these all together and put them in a box because I believe that is quite a serviceable lower setup that I just knocked all apart again. Um, now, let's look at the, what I believe, if, and I'm going, just guessing here, I think this is a nine and one half. Same process, put it like that, so it, tap it open. This one's going to have a little more oil on it, I think. And I think did right. Ooh, let me go get a assorbent pad. Let me get my diaper before I make too big a mess down here. There we go. Just gonna let it dry there a little bit. Boy, that one got some dirty oil compared to that other one. She's dripping good, but I got a sorbent down there, so. Until that little detent ball fell out, I almost forgot to uh, print something out. If you look at this, this is the six horse lower unit. You'll see a, a screw right there. Right there, you'll see a screw. And I don't think you can see it in there, but all that is is a piece of stamped steel in a strip like and that's your detent. That's so when you shift the engine, you'll feel it go clunk, clunk, clunk to the three positions, forward, neutral, and reverse. I don't, I don't know that you can see that 
in there. But it has that because there's no detent balls and spring in this six horsepower. So if you take the clutch dog off, ugh, I guess that one's, yeah, there's a clip there. But right in here where the clutch dog slides, in this bigger outboard, whoops, there's a hole there that has two balls and a spring, and I'll show you that in a second. Pick that up. Okay. So. Oops. Yes, there is a clip there. So that would go like that. Okay. Would it? Yes. Yep. All right. So, oh, and you can see in this one, there is no screw and no metal strap. And that's because this one has, I'll get over here where you can see it a little better. It has a detent there. So in other words, when you shift, um, you'll feel it. Not with that one you won't. What'd I do with it? There it is. <laughs> okay, that's the pinion gear. Was that the... I done lost my parts. What the heck did I do with it? There. Okay. Getting all confused here. Okay. So this might even be a, an older Model 18 uh, lower. But around the edge here, you'll see this is called a spaghetti seal. And you push that in there and then cut it to fit. And then you've got the O-ring that completes it. When you go to seal one of these up, always put a good dab on each corner of the spaghetti seal where it meets right there, meets the O-ring. All right, so now this lower unit, when you shift it, the way you feel those distinct shifting spots for neutral and reverse is there's neutral it just went pop and then there's reverse and I'll show you the detent balls and spring there's neutral now both of these should spin okay so let's get that out of there Almost. There we go. And again, there's your cradle and yoke right there. Just like, same as the other one for the most part. Okay. Everything's pretty much the same. You got a pinion gear that comes down from the drive shaft that turns everything. Yeah, see, looking at this one, I can see this one is definitely quite a bit more worn. You, you're not going to be able to see it in camera than that other than the six, one, six horse one. All right, so let's take off the forward gear. And then I'm trying to think of how to do this because when I do it, the detent balls and spring are going to go flying. I can, there, there they are. Okay, you can see one of the little detent balls right there. And then when I shift it back, if I, if I can, now it's in neutral. And the, both detent balls are covered. So, let me, there they went. It shot me in the face. There's one of the balls. 
There's the spring. Now can I find the other one? Or did it stay in there maybe? Yep, it stayed in there. Good. Okay, so right there is a hole that goes completely through the spline portion of the shaft. And in that hole, let me take off my gloves. Hopefully that don't go slipping out of my hands, but in that hole goes a spring. And then on each side of the spring goes these little ball bearings that look like that. Now, when you go to put all this back together, it is a little bit of a pickle. But I can paint a couple things out. When you go to put the clutch dog itself back over the spring and detent balls, one of these lugs, one of the three lugs, has what they call a ramp. And I'm trying to see if I can... And opposite, okay, so this is the lug with the ramp. It has a little ramp, they call it right here. It's a little cutaway that's chamfered, scarfed at an angle so that it will roll up or slide up and those detent balls will roll under it. Opposite this single lug will be the other ramp, okay? Now, what you can do, I'll try and do it here, is when you're lining up the clutch dog, find the one with the ramp, which is that one, and you can put it, I want my spring again, you can put it over one of the, it will hold one ball in the spring, so to speak and you'll still have access open to the other hole for the other ball. I hope that makes sense. This lug will cover, partially cover that hole holding in the ball and the spring, and on the other side you'll have access to the hole. So let's put the spring in and one ball. I can barely pick these little balls up and then I washed everything with soap. All right, so you've got the spring and the ball on one side, and you can see the spring sticks out on the other. So, with the ball and the spring there, find the, the odd lug that has the ramp, which is that one right there. Okay, and like I said, that'll cover that ball and now you have access on the other side to the hole. And this is ramped right here, too. So now that's going to hold that in for you. Then you take the other ball, put it right there, and with a lot of pressure... Well, there I went. I just moved my clutch dog too much. Let me do it again. There. Cover that one up. Don't let your clutch dog move. <laughs> and then, in my case, I'm going to try and pick up this slimy, soaked up ball. Put it there. Now, pushing toward that way. And if you can't get it with your fingernails, try a flat screwdriver. It can be done. <laughs> about got it I think there it is that's how you get it all back together I hope I was in there
working on my friends or a, a motor I'm putting together for a friend and we've got to see what we got with this one here because This is what's known as one of them paying customers. Now that's uh, interesting. This is the way he brought me the motor. Got a little of these bags. Desiccant bags, whatever they call them. He's got them all tied around the carb. It's not something I see every day. At least I guess that's what that is. I don't know. Actually, these are hand warmers. Don't ask me. Don't ask me. But it says right there, little hotties. I had them strapped all to the carburetor. Had them all tied there with fishing line. Now I can see the see all the salt coming. Look up under that recoil right there. Look right around here. <laughs> so let me get my compressor lit off and we'll blow her out. I'll be right back. Okay, this is one of these. Uh, it's been sitting. I'm going down to a remote site on the island. I just want you to go through it, make sure it'll start and all. Supposedly runs decent. Um, but it has been sitting. I lubed things up. I shot air down the upper chamber passage here with a little starting fluid. I haven't done anything else to it. I primed it. It does. The primer seems to work. So oh, we're going to give it a couple of jerks and see what we get. Well, we got a pop. We're a little tri flow down there. Easy to bulb, I think I did that. Alright.
kill switch wire. Kill switch grounds corroded off of it. The, uh, with the safety clip in it. Even with the clip in there, it's dying. Something with the kill switch. But other than that, she seems to run pretty good. Um, maybe do something with some of this wiring back here. Not sure what that's about, but it's all rusty too. Yeah, the wiring back here is kind of a little bit of a, I don't know, I can do better than a wire nut. And this is coming from the kill switch. So, but this whole back end I'm going to have to clean up a little. So that would be the kill switch wire coming to ground. So this one should go to a wire somewhere in here, black and yellow. Oh, this is, that's my black and yellow. So that kills it. So I think we just got to mix up in wires here. Oh, there it is right there. There it is. So I'll pull the plugs out and that way I can tell when I get the kill wire working. I'll be back. Um, now on the 25 that I'm doing, changing over to Tiller, there's been a change in plans. Um, of course there's always a change in plans, ain't there? But uh, What happened was, as I dug into the uh, 25, in addition to a broken shift handle, I found all kind of broken stuff. Almost all the plastic that was anything to do with that shift handle was broken. There was just bunches of it. So then, I pulled it off. I pulled the throttle section off and stuff. And every one of the motor mounts were delaminated and broken. Every one of them. All, all of them. The bottoms, the tops, they were all broken. So, I got to looking around. And I have a better donor motor. 
so I'm going to go that route, I think. Um, so what I did was I pulled the power head off of it, and uh, like I said, this one is one I'm doing for a friend. So uh, when it comes to paying customers and what they need and so forth, they'll come first, and then I'll do this one in my spare time. But here's the other donor that I got to work with and uh, it may look a little rough but the transom, transom clamps are all free on it it seems to shift into through the gears fine and so I pulled the power head off that other one and the tiller handle right there I will just unbolt that it's one bolt from the uh, other one and put on there and the motor mounts seem good on this unit, so little paint, little elbow grease, and I'll pop that power head into that unit, and it'll just make the whole thing a lot easier. I decided. So that's what I'm going to do there. And uh, so So I got that 30 all squared away, and uh, guy's supposed to be in here tomorrow to pick that up. I got the little 15 horsepower. Um, I had to chop it down into a lower unit um, for a fella, and I got that one all shortened up, and there's already a video on me doing that, so that's why I didn't really record much of that, if at all. And I can't remember. And, uh, but it's out of here already. And, uh, this 30 horse should be out of here tomorrow. And I'll get back on the 25, um, changing it over to tiller and all that. But, I've got some other stuff to get to, and that's for sure, but uh, I'll keep filming this one as we go. And, as always, you never know what's going to show up here. So, I'm sure this one's getting a little long, so we're going to stop it here. And, uh, as always, that is one more hack from Goyette. Thanks for watching. More vids are coming on Inside Outboards with your host, Cody Bass.